What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you how you can avoid using mutexes in your uh, Golang applications, uh, avoid locks, avoid atomic values by using actually a very old pattern, which is called the actor uh, pattern, the actor model. It's not exactly the same, although it has some uh, similarities, right? But before we continue, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel and you like the content I'm providing to you, consider subscribing to the channel, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and jump into my Discord community. All right, so <clears throat> let's go. Basically, um, I'm gonna, like usual, gonna give a good, uh, try to give a good use case for this. And we're gonna make a simple uh, game server, right? So let's uh, start with this thing. We're gonna say uh, type uh, server, a little bit of lag here. It's gonna be a struct. That's fine. Uh, we're gonna say here func. We're gonna attach a function to the server. We're gonna say handle. Um, it could be different. It, this could be basically, uh, we're gonna simulate a server, uh, for, for example, a server in the browser, uh, a game in the browser that is basically using JSON HTTP to uh, send commands to the server. Uh, and then the server is basically going to handle these commands, these JSON requests, and it's going to uh, basically um, call its game state or something and update it uh, with all the players sending these requests, right? So this handle, we're gonna say handle set player, for example or set, let's say handle new player, uh, which is basically gonna be a player, which is gonna be a pointer to a player that doesn't exist. We're gonna make that and we're gonna say error. Right, normally uh, in a real use case scenario, what's gonna happen is this player is going to be, for example, maybe maybe you already have a handle, a handle message or handle request that's uh, decoding the message and then propagating to the correct function. And that's gonna be this handle new player here, which is um, going to be called in separate GoRoutines, right? Because each client, uh, each player sending from the browser, each client from the browser sending a request is going to be a new GoRoutine. So this handle new player is not going to be concurrent safe, right? <coughs> so um, yes, so we have this player thing, doesn't exist. So we're gonna say type uh, player struct. We're gonna give this uh, a name or something which is gonna be a string, of course, right? So this is all fine. And of course, we also need uh, a game state. So we're gonna say game state, also going to be a structure. And um, we're going to have players. Uh, play is gonna be a slice of pointer to player, something like that, right? So let's uh, do something very simple, new game state real quick, which is going to return a game state. Like that, uh, return game state because we need to have this players initialized we could do it with a make but we're gonna do it like this players uh, just like that perfectly fine right so that's that and the server is going to have a game state um, actually to be honest can be small and game state pointer actually pointer to this game state right so what's going to happen here each time we handle this uh, new player what's going to happen is we're going to say as game state equals append uh, wait actually it needs to be players just like that. It, the font is a little bit big for me. Uh, it's good for you, but big for me, so it's it's a bit nasty. Game state players, uh, we're gonna attach, of course, this player. We're gonna append this player to the game state, and it should be all good. Um, okay, maybe we could do something like this. New server to make it a little bit better um, in our tests. And uh, we're gonna say return me a server. Uh, yes, it's fine. And then we're going to say that the game state is going to be a new game state. Call it a day. What's going on here? New game state. All right. That's it. So um, that's fine. So the first thing we're going to do is make a test real quick. Uh, I already have this file open, but nothing in it. So that's perfectly fine. We're going to say func uh, test is fine. We're going to say server. Uh, the server is going to be a new, not a new game state. It's going to be a new server, right? And then we're gonna simulate um, that this uh, server, right? This handle new player, right? We're gonna simulate that it's coming from GoRoutines, right? Just like it's going to be in real life. So we're gonna say four. We're gonna do, um, let's say 10 iterations, paste it in here. We're gonna make a GoFunk real quick. Actually, to be honest, we don't need to. We can do it like that, all fine, right? So now we need to have a player here. So we're gonna say player, um, trying to do this as a wrap it as I can. I'm already heard them. So we're gonna say player is gonna be FMT S sprint F. 
I'm gonna say player, actually it can be small, player underscore percentage D and I fine and player, just like that, cool. So uh, if we run this, we're going to have issues, right? So let's uh, test this, um, go test. Actually issues, if we run it like that, it's going to be no issues of course. But if we uh, test it with a race condition, with a race flag, right? You, for the people that don't know, you can use the dash dash race. It will spin up a race detector alongside your test and um, it can detect race conditions, right? And you can see, we have a, a, a data race condition. Why? That's because if we open up server on the other side here, <coughs> we can see we have this game state here, which is a pointer. Um, and we are basically setting new players to the game state. So we are modifying the state in different go routines, which is a bad practice, right? So how would you solve this uh, um, most of the time? Well, you're gonna say very simple, the game state. Uh, we're gonna have a, a lock here, a mutex It's gonna be a sync. Uh, RW mutex just like that and then we're gonna say each time we handle a new player we're gonna say s lock actually not true what is game state here um, this is actually a problem real quick because what I'm gonna do real quick is this uh, funk G game state add player P player just like that. Uh, let's copy, delete this thing. Paste it in here. Right, and we're gonna say, this is gonna be a G players append, delete this, delete this, P. Right, that's what it's gonna be. So uh, this lock, to be honest, let's comment this back, like uh, comment it out real quick. Uh, hand on your player, we're gonna say game state, Add player, player, like that. And then we're gonna run our test again to show you that it's gonna be the same problem, right? You see, race, uh, race condition detected, right? So what we're gonna do right now, we have this lock. So we're gonna say here, uh, G lock, lock, right? We're gonna lock for writing. And of course, we're gonna do a defer func or you do it uh, after. You're gonna say G lock, uh, unlock, just like that. And if we run the test once again, it's all fine, right? So. Boom, all fine, no conditions, everything is nice and fruity. Well, so why would you, why would we actually um, try to remove this lock, right? A lock is actually not that bad most of the time, but you need to understand. For tutorial code, locks are always fine, right? <laughs> if you look at YouTube, all these videos, these locks, it's all fine. You will, you can sleep on your both sides. The problem is if you have um, a highly concurrent program in a highly concurrent distribu distrib distributed program, you have locks all over the place, right? Go routines are going to spin up, clients are connecting, messages are flowing through your whole system. And <clears throat> most of the time, uh, you will not notice the problem with this lock because somebody will have a lock, somebody else wanna, wanna adjust the state, but they can't because it's still locked and, and they need to wait and it could be such a mess uh, and you have actually no clue what is going on and your program is running slow and how are you gonna de debug that? Well, to be honest, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. So locks is good, but at scale, locks could be a big problem. Trust me. <coughs> Man, what is this cough? So basically, how can we avoid uh, this lock? Well. We are uh, gonna do this. Let me close this file on this side, just like that, and open up the server real quick here once again. It's not the correct server. Let me use my mouse for one time. So what we're gonna do basically is we're gonna say this game state is gonna have uh, a message channel, right? It's gonna be a chain. Um, well, it's gonna be a chain player. For, for example, you could say player chain actually, to be honest. Um, actually, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna say it's gonna be a chain of any. It doesn't really matter, chain any, right? So if we make a new game state here, we're gonna say that this message channel is going to be make me a chain of any. And let's buffer this, how many? We don't know, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna buffer this, norm we should not always buffer this, but this is a complete different, 
it's gonna it's going to be a completely different topic um you should buffer this i don't know what's the the size of the mailbox of this uh, game state 10 is fine in this case actually one is already fine but it doesn't matter right don't think about it don't worry about it it's all good copy paste and uh, that's something for later on so what we're gonna do is we are going to in this game state right we're gonna say funk we're gonna make a new funk to this uh, guy and we're gonna say g game state uh, it's gonna be the let's call it loop it doesn't matter I'm, I'm, i most of the time call it loop you could do a for select in this case but um what we could do is g we could range over the channel why not for g actually for message in a range g message channel right we're gonna range over these messages each time we receive a message right we're gonna say func i'm gonna make a new function here game state i'm gonna call this handle uh, message it's gonna be some kind of a router right it's gonna be a message any right now i'm gonna say g handle message just like that put the message inside of this thing in this loop and we're gonna make a switch here right we're gonna say switch um Huh. I'm gonna call this V. Why not? It doesn't matter. Um, it's gonna be message type, actually, to be honest. Modifications uh, message here. We're gonna switch on the type of the message. Then we're gonna say case. It's gonna be a pointer to a player. If it's a pointer to a player, uh, we are gonna say g handle actually add player yeah that's fine add player just like that right of course uh, let's make a default also a default and we're gonna say that uh, if it's not a player if it's not something that we don't know uh, let's make a panic or something we're gonna say invalid uh, message received or something right all fine so basically each time we have a new game state uh, what we're gonna do here basically of course we need to close this uh, go routine and clean it up but that's not something for now we're gonna say g is going to be this then we're gonna say g loop go g loop just like that and then we are going to return g right and loop is small caps right and new game state that's fine um uh, okay i think we're set right Cool, cool, cool. So what we actually can do, to be honest, is we could, uh, in the server, right? In the server, we could uh, um, use this message channel itself, but I think it's a little bit dirty. So we're gonna make a nice uh, helper function for this. We're gonna say G, game state, receive. Uh, let's make it public. It doesn't matter, but it's just an, uh, a thingy. So receive a message with this type any. Uh, just like that. And then we are going to say g message channel and we're gonna pipe in this message uh, just like that and call it a day right now <coughs> we're gonna refactor this so uh, each time we have a handle player uh, instead of saying add player on the game state what we're gonna do is we're gonna say game state receive this player right so what's gonna happen is this game state is gonna receive the player and uh, it's basically going to trigger this function receive it's going to put this message in its channel right and then it's basically going to um, handle the message and it's going to see that it's a player so it's going to add the player right the question rather is what we're going to do is make a logging here maybe in game state actually um where are we here game state add player yada 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 fmt print uh adding player what's going on here like this we don't need this thingy we're gonna say p all fine actually to be honest you could say p name and hopefully this is gonna work so i'm gonna say i'm gonna test this once again with the race detector right it's gonna it's fine of course what we need to do is basically can i do dash v here they're gonna be yes right so you see we are adding the player easy peasy no locks to be honest, we have a lock here. Hey, we have a lock. We're gonna delete it. What am I doing? 
but it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't really matter, right? So we're gonna start this. Boom. You see, we have no locks whatsoever, and we are still adding players, and everything is fine, and we have no locks. And if every, um, you can understand, if every object, model, actor is basically implementing this behavior, you can actually uh, avoid a lot, a lot, a lot of mutexes using mutexes and locks in your system, which will be better if you're building for scale and you have a huge, huge, huge program. Right, so uh, that's it. And basically what you could do <coughs> is, uh, for example, I don't know, game state, uh, I don't, uh, pff, foo is an int, right? And you want to uh, set foo, for example, you could make uh, something like this, an increment foo. It's gonna be a structure. Uh, or basically set foo or something, set foo, message. We're gonna call it set foo message, like that. Uh, value, int, boom, right? So what we're gonna do basically here is uh, handle message. Uh, instead of a player, we're gonna say uh, a foo, set foo message, right? And we're gonna say here, uh, g foo equals message value something like that and then we're gonna basically say here actually you could copy this to make it actually super clean super super clean we're gonna say set foo handle set foo maybe handle set foo uh, it's gonna be a foo message a set foo Message real quick. You're gonna say G foo. I don't know why I'm calling it foo. It is what it is Foo value Pfft, something like that and then we're gonna say here FMT uh, Setting Foo Foo value just like that, right? Um, this is fine, and then we're gonna do here G handle Set foo message in here. All good, all good. And now what you could do here is um, instead of saying receive a player, we could do. <sighs> Let's make another function actually. This video is getting way too long, but it is what it is. Handle set foo as game state receive. Uh, val int, we're gonna receive an nf set foo message here. Set foo. This, 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 this type hinting sometimes is so fucking annoying. Uh, it's gonna be value, I guess. Value is gonna be val, right? That's what we're gonna do. It's fine. Now in test, server test. So we're gonna set the player here, we're not gonna do that anymore. So we're gonna comment this out, and instead of that, instead of uh, this, we're gonna say go server handle set foo, and we're gonna put the iterator in it. Um, make actually, to be honest, we can use this. Boom, handling setting foo, all fine, right? So that's how you can communicate between um, uh, in different within within a, a, a go routine scope within a, an an un an unsafe scope uh, to avoid locks. That's how you can communicate with, uh, which is basically called the, the actor model. Although uh, some people are using this already in Golang and they don't have a clue that this is basically based on, on the actor model, which is invented way, 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 years, years and years ago. But hey, uh, this is, of course, you can you can uh, make a simple library for that to help you with all these things to construct that stuff. But I think this is uh, already fine for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the content I'm providing to you, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, uh, leave some questions in the comments and jump into my Discord community. Peace.